Hi. Good morning, Maria. <laughs> you saw that, Maria. <laughs> uh, okay, he threw me off. Good morning to you guys. I missed y'all. My code is doing a little bit better. All right, tea time. <laughs> tea time is hanging in there. Good morning, Sean. Well, guys, listen. I'm preparing for the um, 23rd annual Christmas extravaganza, which is going to be on Christmas Eve. Now, if you're in San Diego, that will be an awesome event for you to be at. If you're out of town and you want to fly in and want to know what it's like to feed thousands of people. Remember, Jesus fed the 5,000, what I call it, just a little tuna sandwich. Uh, guess what? You all can be a part this year at the Christmas extravaganza. Um, we give over 250,000 items uh, shared with uh, 6,000 people, 5,000 to 6,000 people, um, which means everywhere that you go, every place that you stop at, you could pick up something absolutely free. It extends everything from uh, groceries cooked food, um, there's entertainment, household goods, clothes, you name it. I got clothes, shoes, toys, stuff, everything you want, even enough, you name it. Well, all of that stuff will be there on that night. Last year, we were blessed to be able to give away a BMW. And uh, I just spoke to a gentleman uh, the other day, and you guys start praying now. Um, he wanted to offer giving away a house this year, but he wanted to do it in the form of selling raffle tickets and beginning now um, so that he could actually give away um, one of his homes. So start praying on that. We pray that that's something that can occur on at the Christmas extravaganza. Also this year for that, we're planning for Santa to not only come in on a motorcycle, but we want Santa Claus to come in on a helicopter once again. We did that years ago. I believe the idea began in Sid San Diego uh, by the, the famous radio host. We know him as Tayati. Um, and we're looking to try to do that again this year. Um, just an excellent event. It's opened also for the seniors and um, the disabled, pregnant. We set up something totally different for you inside banquet round table style. And me in there playing your games, but someone's out getting your gifts for you. Uh, every year we strive to do better and better. Uh, so if you'd love to be a part of the 23rd annual Christmas extravaganza, which is every year on Christmas Eve, then come on with it. Good morning, Annette Gaylor. I see you. God bless you. Um, good AM from Jax. One eye open. That's all right. long as one eye open, you can get in through one eye. <laughs> open your ears. And if you guys are laying down, I've told you this before, if you're laying down trying to be awake, that's almost like hanging out by a tree. Good morning, Maria. That you know is going to bite you. You know, if, if, if you can't stay awake laying down, then sit up. Go get your tea. Like Dr. Carroll, it is tea time. It's tea time. That's tea time with somebody with a horse voice. <laughs> it's tea time. Carol. Y'all hear the intro this morning? I know Maria did it. Come on, Lord. Praise the Lord. And if you guys want to come and um, be a volunteer, 
It takes a lot of planning and a lot of work to wrap 6,000 doughies. It's not something that you just do overnight. So we wrap every last one of them. We want to put our personal touch and love on it as we give to people. So, yeah, that's open for you all if you'd like to, to come on out. Do what it do. That's all. Just do what it do. Somebody's asking to hear tea time again, so I'm trying to find it. Hope time. Hopefully, this time it won't speak up on me here. <laughs> Scared me for a minute. Um, you know I'm stalling, guys, and you know why. It's the time where you share with some folks, get some more people on, just giving them a chance to to sign on. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yep. That's what I'm trying. To do. God is so good. Just everything. Is good. Everything just seemed to be going wonderful. Don't you know it's tea time? Tea time. Time to drink in the word of God. I heard the call is tea time. It's tea time. Come start your day with the word of God. Did you hear it's tea time? It's tea time. Come be refreshed by the word of God. I see this tea time. It's tea time. Pastor Carol's gonna bring a word. Tea time, tea time, tea time, tea time. Share with your friends. That was for whoever was looking for it again. I think it'd beat you to it. Hi, Michael. Hi, Pam, Aaron. Gosh, a lot of new faces. Welcome, guys. You're making me excited ahead of time. Welcome to tea time. <laughs> wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. D. D. Hi, D. Good to see you, D. What's on the schedule today? Today is Wednesday. Erica's been taking her driving test. We've all been praying for her to pass. Um, hi, Joshua. Um, Wednesday. Food pickup. If any of you are in need of some, some food in San Diego, holla. Maybe you can meet one of the volunteers somewhere to get you some food. Um, April. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's a mess. Okay, we got about a minute left. This is the last time for you all to get on out there. And you all pray for promise sold out for Jesus always and forever. No one other than Tamika who led us in prayer on yesterday. She's going to go back and visit some of our old family and friends. And we're tra praying for traveling grace. Yes, sir. Get you on up there and get you back down here. Get you back to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, about 50 seconds left, guys. Share, share, share. I should be doing it too. We have any prayer warriors out there that want to volunteer to pray? Hello. Just type, I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray to the prayer. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray to <laughs> If you're there, prepare to pray. Please pray for me. Somebody said, please pray for me. Praying God will make it happen. Yes. Pray for me. Patrice! This is one of my babies right there. Of course, we'll pray for you. Hi, Cherise. About 30 seconds left. Hey, Pastor Grant, I see you. Anybody want to pray this morning? Anybody want to pray this morning? This morning, this morning, this morning, but I'm going to do the Lord. What? Twice. Can't get your lips to do that. Come on, practice. Get in the mirror. Four. About 20 seconds left. Bishop. Ah! Somebody say good morning, Bishop Greg. Bishop Greg, good morning, sir. New on here with April, you are welcome in your newness to be back with us 
anytime. We just get on here and spend a lot of time with the Lord. We're doing a part B of yesterday. And you are so, 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 so welcome. So welcome. Oh, there go Bishop. I see you now, Bishop. It finally scrolled on that computer. Okay, about 10 seconds left. And we gonna hit the ground running. First time too. Hey Jasmine, welcome. We're praying for you. I got you in there. Andrea said, Good morning, divas and guys. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. We come to you this morning, Lord, saying thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us. Thank you for meeting us here, Lord Jesus, to spend time with us and to speak into our spirits and into our lives, Lord Jesus. Father, there are those who are desiring prayer on today. Some are seeking you. And that's the reason that they're on here today. Lord, I'm asking God that you will hear their prayers and hear their calls. Begin blessing right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, some of us are at work right now, on the street right now, Lord Jesus. Some of us are at school right now, Lord Jesus. And we're asking, Father, that you will make yourself present in our lives even more than ever before. Lord, we also lift you up right now, Father, for being a God who understands, who does not look at us for the things that we do wrong, but look for at us for the things that we do right, Father. For you encourage us, Father, to make room for us in that heavenly place that you're preparing for us. And so, God, we thank you right now. <coughs> We thank you right now for the, uh, the space that you're giving for us. We thank you for paying attention to us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for forgiving us, Lord Jesus. And then God, Patrice has lifted up, uh, I asked a prayer request from you, God, that you will bless her. And so, Lord Jesus, we don't know exactly what it is that she's going through. But God, we understand that you know. And so, God, we're asking that you will make yourself present in whatever the situation is. Lord, bless her family, bless her husband, bless her marriage. Bless her job, bless her home, Lord Jesus. Bless the air that she breathes, Lord Jesus. In every way, God, just let her know what to see and understand and feel your presence in her life. Father, you said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And Lord, we're praising you in our worst circumstances. We're praying you in our downtime, God. We're praying you in our uptime, God. And we're praying you in our joyous time. Lord, I'm asking, Father, that you would also, Father, carry that airplane across the Sky. As Tamika travels home, Lord Jesus, to, to visit the memories in which you have given her, those that you have placed in her lives to play a memorable part of who have helped make her and help form her. Lord, I'm asking that that trip will be one like never before, that the power of you will be deposited on that ground the minute she stepped foot on that ground, the minute she stepped foot into that airplane. Father, I'm as asking that the same resurrection power that was in the atmosphere that people felt that knew that you had risen will be felt in that airplane and will be felt when she lands and takes her first foot on the ground. The God I'm asking, Father, also God, that you will bless Erica, Lord Jesus, to stand in peace and help her to understand that fear is not of you. Nervousness is not of you. You are the one that is in control as she gets behind that wheel. Father, she has failed so many times in her life. And God, you have stricken that thing and turned it around and helped her to see that she is special in your sight. And so, Lord, I'm asking that today will be one of those days that she can write into her baby book that God has did it again. So, God, I'm asking that you will bless her. Then, Lord Jesus, bless the Mullins, Lord Jesus, as they do on their, their, their online social media, Red Flags Relationships, I believe that it's called. God, I'm asking that souls will be saved, relationships will be mended. Just things will be just changed, God, according and pleasing to your eye, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless Reginald and Jackie. Andrea and Caleb, bless all of those I cannot see, Wanda, Jasmine, who's new on today, Pastor Grant, April, Patrice again, Lord Jesus, Michael, Lord Jesus, Michael Taylor, Lord Jesus, bless Pam Simpson and Darren White, God, in the name of Jesus, they need you too, and all of those we cannot see, God bless you, Bishop Ingram, Lord Jesus, Pastor Angie, Lord Maria, and LaShawn, Lord bless Roger, Lord Jesus, bless Miss Knight, Lord Jesus, Deal with her health, God. Keep her well, Lord. 
Maria and Gina and Madeline, Lord Jesus, and some of the others, God, again, that I cannot see. Also, God, put your hand in the situations of Bishop Mullen and Gaylard, Erica, God, Tamika and Dee, Father, also Bishop Mullen and his family, T uh, Trinity and Genesis, Miracle, uh, Greg Jr., God, all of those, Monique, bless them, bless Dee Peters, Lord Jesus, everybody who's in need of prayer. God, we're calling out their names one-on-one -on -one as we can see them, but God, we understand that there are some in the back that we cannot see, but God, I'm asking that you will bless them too. Bless the atheists who's in the background, bless the doubters who are in the background, bless the looky-loos that are in the background, God, bless the bishops and pastors and teachers and apostles, Lord Jesus, and help us to work together, pleasing to your will and pleasing to your sight. Lord, I lift up Mother Williams. God, as I say her name, there's a sense of preciousness that comes over me. So whatever it is, God, that she's dealing with, Lord, I'm asking that you'll bless her life in an incredible way. It is in Jesus' name that we seal this prayer. Amen. For the next 10 seconds, let's give God his just due and just tell him thank you for being so prevalent in our lives and not letting us down. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. You know, when you tell God thank you, he adores and he just, he gets a kick out of us saying thank you and praising him for how he has operated in our lives and he loves when we worship him and we fall on our knees and get intimate with him. Just God, Lord, we just want this special moment. He desires that from us. So if you could just do that for a few minutes, just just type some hearts up. Just just type, Lord, I love you. Just tell God, thank you. And just tell God I worship you and I adore you and I desire to live for you. And, and just watch and see how he responds to your willingness to give him the honor that he deserves not not that he needs to be big headed not that he needs to be uh pushed above or whatever He's, he still carries a servant's heart but just like you want people to appreciate you in times that you have done things that you know god has used you to bless people with he desires and he inhabits the praises of his people may our praises go to the most high god Right now, right now in my circumstances, all my praises and honor, and my worship goes to you. God, you are deserving of it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. 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 God, we love you. We love you. I want to thank you all who have been praying. Uh, for my healing and get this cold out of my body um, I can feel your prayer request for each day is getting better and better my voice is not where it should be but it is where God wants it to be on this day and I, I praise God for right where I am in my circumstance and I want to encourage you all to do so also today we're in an encore. For those of you who were on yesterday, we began out the beginning of Psalms. Our first day in Psalms is what I should say. And the Lord led us to the one that is most commonly heard, I believe, in this society today. And we hear it at funerals. Sometimes we hear it at weddings. Um, we hear it um, when people are beginning the service services at the church and they're ordaining and we hear it quite a bit but we took time out to begin to break it down in pieces doing a word study because what I desired through the spirit of the Holy Spirit was that it had a more of a meaning to you the next time uh, that you heard it that it just wasn't another scripture that rolled off our tongues or because we have learned it because we've heard it so many times, now we can just spit it out verbatim. But it means so much more when you can find the meaning behind it. And that's Psalms 23. And those of you who have a Bible, please get your Bible. Stay in the habit of flipping the pages. Um, I know that the cell phones are now where you can push a button and find it. But there's going to come a time when your cell phone is broken. And you're going to need to be able to get in that Bible and find it. And you don't want to have to take 
hours on end trying to look for Genesis and Revelations or even the four Gospels. So it's always a good habit to stay in the habit of flipping through the pages and being able to find what you want when you need it. When you're when you're in, in for a desperate word from the Lord, um, it's it's always good to be able to just turn it and find it. Amen. And not deal with the frustrations of having a hard time uh, looking for it. And so we're going to be dealing with an encore. An encore simply means I need more. Do it again. Go back in. Encore, David. David, it was good, but I, there's so much more. And in that encore, we're going to start at the second piece. As far as we had gotten on yesterday, I'll review a little so that we won't get lost. Uh for those who weren't on yesterday so that you could kind of understand where we are. So I'm going to read on down, but I won't do the word study until I get to the fourth verse. And then we're going to proceed on um, from there, uh, dealing with the 23rd Psalms. And it says, when you find it, type, I live it as your declaration to live this life and not just read it or talk about it, but live this life that we read from the word. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes it me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now we're at four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. Let's deal with that right there yea or even or just because I walk through the valley just because I'm living in a circumstance just because I'm going through right now just because life is not treating me like I want it right now it says, yea, though I walk. In other words, I'm here and because I trust you, I'm going to continue to walk through it. We said yesterday, the Lord's letting us know is we don't have to run through it. We don't have to crawl through it. <laughs> we don't have to try to avoid it. God says, you know, just walk through it. When you're walking, you're walking because you're not afraid. You're walking because you trust God. Okay, even though, yea, though I walk through this mess that I'm in, it says, yea, though I walk through the valley. The valley means, man, this is like the, it seems like the worst of the worst. I feel like I'm in the deepest hole right now. Even though I'm doing, I might be losing my relationship right now. My friends are not my friends anymore. I have friend of me, people that I thought had my back. I may be losing some things, relationships, my home may have returned back to my old habits and my old ways. And I'm just not, even though I'm not feeling that joyous peace that I feel, I'm in my valley right now. We have to understand that just because we're in a valley does not mean that we're there to stay. Valley experiences are those experiences that God will allow us to go through so that he can lift us up and put us in our new place so that we can praise him and give honor and, and just to see how great he is in our lives. Even though I'm in this valley right now, even though I'm dealing with an illness right now, even though I don't have the money that I need right now to do what I do. He says, even though I walk through this, even though I, I'm in it, I'm, I'm, I'm going to chill while I'm in it. 
I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm not going to be desperate anymore. This is David, right? Come on, Encore David, sing that song. Yea, though I've been through some stuff, I am going to stick with you and I'm going to walk through it. Yet it's in a valley. I know that you will show up in a valley too. Don't you know that God will show up in your valley time too? He's not just there when everything is going good. God is there when you're in your valley. That's why sometimes even in the valley, you'll see green popping up out of the ground. Do you know that there's green things that grow in a valley? Life still lives in a valley. Jesus lived in his valley time. People treated him bad. And yet he still lives. He put a true meaning, a, a new meaning to life. When he resurrected, he put a real meaning by the word life. And that life has been given to us. Even though you're going through, don't mean that you dead. Don't mean that you stuck. It only means that God is paying attention to you. He's, fine. He, he's, he's paying attention to you once again. And he's waiting for that very moment to pull you out so, you can, so that you can see it. He enjoys your excitement when you see that it was him that brought you out. When you understand that it was him and not yourself or not your preacher or, or, or not your mother or your daddy. It was him and only him. He wants us to get into a habit of depending on him. So it says... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, then it goes to, I will fear no evil. I will fear nothing that the enemy places in my face. I will not fear the devil. I will not fear his demonic posses. I will not fear anything that's opposite of God. The only thing that I will fear is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's in the sense of God, it, I'm afraid to hurt your feelings again. I'm afraid to let you down. But far as the stuff that the enemy places in our face to try to put us down below the bus, I ain't scared of you. I fear you not. I choose not to allow fear and anxiety to control my life. I choose to have God control my life. I don't fear your attacks. I, I choose to guard my heart. So much so that my heart doesn't feel the implementation of your, of your threats. Come on. Enemy that you place in my life. Psalms 27 and 1 says... The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If I got God, as long as I, I, I trust him, that he handles my fears. God is, the, God is the only one that I'll accept the feeling of fear for. Because it comes from a different angle. Because I don't want to hurt him. I don't want him to cut me out of eternal living. But far as fear, that false evidence that appear real. F-E-A-R. False evidence that appear real. Devil, you a lie. God introduced you to me a long time ago. When he told me that you're one of a de of deceit. That you come to kill, steal, and to destroy. And that you're the biggest liar on the face of man or the face of earth Psalms 34 and 4 says I prayed to the Lord and he answered me I had a conversation with God and he answered me I was in my valley and I had a conversation with him and he answered me hello Jesus, are you there? Lord, I need to talk to you right now. I'm dealing with something right now. And the Bible says that he answers. He 
He's an answer. And then after he answered, it says, he freed me from my fears. He answered it and snatched us out of fear. He snatched us out of being concerned about losing something that's not important that we can't take to the grave with us. And he's been trying to bless us with something else. And he's been trying to get us to let go. Tuck away fear up under your up under your house somewhere, up under the ground, bury it in death. So that you can see the green that's gonna grow in your valley. So it says, I will fear no evil. Why? He said, for you, who are you, Jesus? He said, for you are with me, Encore David. Say it again. For you are with me. I will never leave you nor forsake you, saith the Lord. For he says, my grace and my mercy. My grace and my mercy. We'll do what? We'll follow you. That means it's going to stay with you at all times. His mercy is there with you even in the midst of your sin. Because why? He still loves you and he's just waiting. Hey man, just ask for forgiveness. Just feel something for what you're doing. My mercy is still here. I still love you, baby. I'm still there for you. That's what grace and mercy is for. Not to be a taken advantage of, but to use. Those who choose to take advantage of it will be turned over to what? A reprobate mind. That means that you've you've done it so often that it doesn't convict you, it doesn't affect you. You have no fear for what you're doing that does not please God. And when it gets to that point, he'll turn you over. But he, that does not mean he doesn't love you. He's given you what you want. But guess what? When it's time to come back, I receive you. In the name of Jesus, I receive you. Go on. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comforts me. Then go on from yesterday, number five. You prepared a table before me. And know what that table that he prepares me, he, he furnished you with plenty already. Plenty is what you have right now. Just look around you. If you're outside, you have trees and dirt and street. You can feel air. He's provided you with plenty. If you're in your car, you can see your, you have an engine and transmission and tires and, and transportation. If you just look at your body, you have arms and feet and legs. God has provided you with plenty already from day one. When your eyes first looked at earth, there was plenty. While you were in your mother's womb, he provided you with plenty. And that plenty increases day by day. Day by day you experience more. You see more. Day by day the plentifulness of God increases in your life. So it says you prepared a table before me. Before me can go two different ways. Before you exited your mother's womb it could be before me. And before me is you do it right in my face. Each and every day, you give me more and more and more. <laughs> you prepared a table before me in the presence, in the presence of my enemy. In other words, God slaps the enemy down for you every single day. Whack! Right in his face. Wham! Let her go. Bam! Wham! Let him go. Wham! Smack! Whack! Whack! In the presence of my enemy, God shows out on your behalf. So when you're in the midst of dis distractions and things going wrong in your life, 
we can't see it because remember there's a spiritual world that's taking place trust and believe in the spiritual realm God is fighting on your behalf he's fighting on your behalf and sometimes you wonder man God did you just do that whoa man we, we get to see the end result but we don't we don't get to see what's going on in the atmosphere. We don't get to see it because it's in the spirit and we're in the body. But when the when the dust settles, we get to see the end result. Hallelujah. We get to see God show out again. Hallelujah. When you get up off of your sick bed, that's that's the end of the fight. God's been fighting all along. Hallelujah. When God blesses you with something, pulls your children out of the muck and mild and pulls you out, we see the end result. Why? Because God wants her to, he wants to fight for us. He's been fighting for you the whole time. So he prepares a table furnishes with plenty in the presence of your enemy then it goes on to say you anoint my head with oil what does that mean we have to go back in ancient time when this was written and it was customary when people come over or when you wanted to uh, make someone else feel comfortable you would pour perfumes and oil on their head even at a banquet or somewhere you would just come it's almost like washing your feet it was an honor when someone came and just anointed your head with perfumes and oil it was like a i don't know i went to africa about 10 years ago and they had a a customary way it was an air tree when i we didn't speak the same language nothing but we did speak the same feelings and that was love toward the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I got there, they treated me in a way of honor, saying thank you for what you have done for my daughter who lives in the States, as a mother and her family. And I walked into the home and they got up and they began to do this dance. They were jumping in a circle and they were playing these drums and the kids were la 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 because they were given honor for what I had done, for the love that I shared with their loved one that lived in the United States. Well, David was saying, you anointed my head with oil, yet you are God. You've still shown me a sense of honor. And that's how God sees you. He sees you as someone incredibly special in every way. He sees you how he made you when he thought about you, Maria. Wow. I'm going to birth out Maria and Maria's gift is going to be this. And she's going to be a blessing to this earth because of this. The minute Maria came out of her mother's womb, the enemy became angry. Same with you, D and Shay and Erica. Just think about it. The enemy wasn't wasn't happy when you got here, and he's still not happy. He's going to do whatever he can to destroy you. But God sees you totally different. He anoints your head with oil. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over, which means your cup is already abundantly filled if it's running over. Come on. My cup runneth over. You've already given me plenty, but you continuously give me more. Thank you, Jesus. You continuously bless my children. Thank you, Jesus. There's no minimum to the blessings in my life. Thank you, Jesus, for my cup runneth over. My marriage is better. My friendship is better. My money gets better. My job gets better. My life gets better. My joy gets better. My song gets better. My cup runneth 
over with you. And therefore my praise runneth over toward you. Come on now. You anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And then he puts a drum roll at the end. And he says, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Lord, thank you for following me all the days of my life. When I messed up, God, thank you for not giving up on me. When I've given up on myself, thank you, Lord Jesus, for not giving up on me. When I've sinned against you, God, you forgave me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being there for me. God, when I doubted you, Lord Jesus, thank you. Some of us have done some of the worst things in the world. We were living at our worst. But surely his goodness and his love stayed there. He did not break his promises. Roger. He didn't. Sometimes it feels like he hadn't been there for us. Trust me, God has never left you, nor has he forsaken you. And then he ends his song, he says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, David was saying, because of all this, for God, I will live. And for God, I will die. I don't care what the circumstance is. I'm going to stand like Job and I'm not going to turn away from you. He made a lifelong dedication for change. And that is exactly what God desires from you, gay Melanie, Romanette, and Sharice B. He needs that commitment from you. Don't you want to see your mansion? Don't you want to walk on those per those paved streets of gold? Don't you want to hear that heavenly choir? Don't you want to be elevated and ascended to be with God and live eternally to know what real life is about? Get ready, God. Get your life and your way in order so that you can sing David's song. It's time to get it right. God can take you away from here in 10 seconds if he wanted to. And you want to make sure that your life is correct. God, I, I am prepared to be in that place with you. I know without a shadow of a doubt, God, that if you were to take my last breath right now, that I would be with you. This is an encore of David's song. Read it over and over again. Desire to hear that song over and over again until it resonates in your spirit and you live it. Psalms 23. God bless you guys. And until next time.